Arch Linux is hands off one of the best Linux distribution out there. But it's got one big problem, the installation. Arch doesn't in fact have any installer. When you download it and boot the ISO, all you find is a command line and maybe if you know where to find it, a set of instructions and you have to figure it out and do everything manually. Now this isn't exactly a bad thing because it's how the Arch way works. But for most people, installing an operating system from a command line is a cumbersome operation. Even if they know how to do it, it's still boring and pretty difficult anyway. But there are other solutions. One of these is Architect, a graphical installer for Arch Linux. It's a great piece of software and today I want to show you how it works. So with no further ado, let's get into it. The Architect ISO is pretty light, it's just a little less than 400 MB. Differently from most Linux installer, Architect won't have a proper user interface. The installer is, in fact, command line, but it's got a nice courses interface. As the live starts, it will scan for an internet connection. Make sure to be online, because just like Arch, this is a net install. You'll be prompted to choose a language and after some checks pass, Architect tells you how to navigate the installer. It's pretty straightforward, you just have to use the arrow keys and the enter button, kinda like an old school BIOS control. The installer offers a series of steps which you have to get through when installing Arch. The nice thing about Architect is that all the operations you have to make are explained clearly. After installing Arch with Architect, you're probably gonna know how to install it manually. Under the Prepare Installation menu, there are some simple routine operations you have to get through when installing any operating system. From Virtual Console setting, to mirrorless configuration, to disk partitioning and mounting. Next on, there's the install base menu. Here's where the real installation starts. First, the installer asks to refresh Pacman keys, just to make sure everything goes well. Then you got to install the base system, including all the main packages to make Arch work. Here you can choose to use the latest kernel or the long-term support one, along with the base devil package that you will probably need to use AUR. I always like to go bleeding edge and chose the latest kernel, Really, if you think you need an LTS software, you probably want to use Debian, not Arch. Finally, you're prompt to install the bootloader. The interesting thing is that you can choose unusual bootloaders for your system, but I strongly suggest you to always choose Grub, since it's pretty much standard for bootloaders and you probably won't have any issue with it, especially if you are dual booting. You can even install a wireless device firmware, just to make sure that you have a fully working system after the installation is complete. Now that the base system is installed, it's time for some configuration. Under the Configure Base menu, you start by generating an FS tab. You can choose three different options. The classic dev method, which I usually choose since I like to swap hard drives and put them in other machines, a user-defined label method and the recommended and more efficient UUIT method that uses unique identifiers for hard drives. As you see, there are plenty of options here and it's nice to be able to choose according to our preference. All the other operations are pretty standard, we're talking about hostname setting and localization options mostly. The next step is configuring user accounts, starting from setting a root password to adding new standard users. Again, it's pretty straightforward, easy and self-explanatory. Next on, there's desktop configuration. The first thing is obviously installing the display server, along with various drivers. Here Architect is mostly automatic. The next step is installing graphic drivers. Architect offers some kind of auto detection, but I found out it doesn't exactly work perfectly, especially when using a virtual machine, at least when using GNOME boxes. But if you want to go manual, you can just skip this menu and select No to have a list of drivers you can install. 
if you have an Nvidia Optimus system, I strongly suggest you to install the Intel driver only at first. You can install Bumblebee later on, as the system is installed. Now you have the possibility to install a desktop environment. And you really have plenty of choices here. From the most common ones, like GNOME and KDE Plasma 5, to more exotic desktops like Cinnamon, Enlightenment, LXQT and many others. Surprisingly, you are also given an option to install window managers like Awesome and i3, which are really popular among Arch users. This is certainly an appreciated little feature. For the sake of this video, I'm going with GNOME, since it's probably the most complete one and also the one I'm more familiar with. After that, Architect Installer asks you to install some common packages that most desktop environments need. I suggest you to install them, unless you really know what you're doing. In case you choose a somewhat minimal desktop environment, you're given the possibility to install network managers and display managers directly from the installer. I'm really happy to see that Architect offers these options. It shows that its target are not only normal users, but also power users that want to customize their experience completely. They're following the Arch way, which is a great thing. Before completing the installation, you're also given the possibility to install accessibility packages. And this really shows the care that's behind the software. Last thing, you run mkinit cpio to complete the installation. Before rebooting into your newly installed system, you can also review your configuration files, just to make sure everything is right. Our system is now installed. We log in and we found our desktop environment, fully configured and working. Have fun! So guys, this is gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.